Hi, my name is Bella Tapia, and I'm doing a video essay on acclaimed writer and director John Hughes. Now, before we delve into the whole shebang, perhaps we should take a look at John Hughes and his background. Born at the tender age of zero on February 18, 1950, Hughes was born in Lansing, Michigan. He did unfortunately pass away on August 6, 2009, at age 59 in Manhattan, New York. Although I did choose John Hughes as a director I'd like to focus on, his former credits in writing. Starting in 1979, he had a brief writing stint for a TV show called Delta House. After much writing for other films like National Lampoon's Vacation and Mr. Mom, Hughes eventually went on to make his directorial debut for a film he wrote called Sixteen Candles. Oh, no more Yankee, my wanky. The donga need food. This film starred Molly Ringwald and Anthony Michael Hall, who eventually went on to become a part of an iconic 1980s group of actors called the Brat Pack. Arguably, John Hughes was the reason that this rap pack of actors formed, because he featured them repeatedly in his films he wrote and directed, like The Breakfast Club, Weird Science, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Uncle Buck. You know, despite the number of notable films he wrote and directed, he didn't really win many awards. In 1991, he won Producer of the Year at the Show West convention, but that's pretty much it. The Breakfast Club eventually won the Silver Bucket of Excellence Award, and Ferris Bueller's Day Off won National Film Registry for the National Film Preservation Board. Above all, in the industry, John Hughes was known to be a fantastic comedic writer, a coming-of-age movie guru, and a person who helped launch the careers of promising actors. To note a few, John Hughes had a number of stylistic features that were unique to him. It's easy to see a John Hughes movie without prior knowledge of it being a John Hughes movie, and identify it as such. First, his use of montage. Second, he ended on freeze frames a lot. Third, eye locking scenes. You trying to kill us? Go! Look at this mess. Paper all over the place. I'll never get. What happened to you? Why? Claire did it. Next, we have recurring themes. I noted the celebration of youth uh, in his films. John Hughes once said, I don't think of kids as a lower form of the human species. We see this in the film The Breakfast Club. He gives teenage characters depth and shows their background rather than portraying them as bratty. Each character in that film has dimension. Hughes ends with that sincerely yours The Breakfast Club letter. And with that, audiences are able to see that regardless of the divergent stereotypes the characters fall under, they all have similar elements their multifaceted youth. We also see this in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Cameron stands for all of us who are too scared and don't embrace our inner kid. Ferris is our inner kid. The imaginative, the risk-taking, the one who doesn't care what others think. Traits we all lose when we grow up. Through Ferris and Cameron's unrealistic, fun-filled kid-like journey, we begin to appreciate aspects of our youth that we've come to forget. Next, we see the theme of stereotypes in these characters, and these stereotypes, who are binded by their titles, eventually rise up in some sort of way. We see this in The Breakfast Club, the nerd, the princess, etc. It shows that we all have stuff in common regardless of these name binding stereotypes. Weird Science, the two nerds that always get picked on, 
eventually rise up. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you have the school principal transform into the comical slapstick villain. And even though uh, he doesn't necessarily rise up in the end, he does, you know, make all efforts to catch Ferris. And Sixteen Candles, the unpopular girl likes the popular guy. Jake Ryan, the senior heartthrob, and Samantha, the lesser known sophomore girl. Hughes takes a narrative that we're all familiar with, adds some comedy, heartfelt moments, and unrealistic situations. A structure that children's stories hold, but adults enjoy Hughes' movies. Classic movies that are enjoyed by many, reach the masses, and continue to live on. A true auteur of his time, John Hughes. I mean, I'd much rather stir controversy than just, you know, fade away.